Darwin and Mendel were both really important figures, but it actually took a little bit for us to reconcile their different theories. So let's talk about what people argued about and how we managed to reconcile. The first thing we want to talk about is something called paradigm change. This comes from a classic book by Stephen, uh, Thomas Kuhn, The Structure of Scientific Revolution. Uh, Kuhn has this model where everybody has preconceptions about how the world was. Even before evolution came, we had those. And that was essentialism. If you need to, go back and review that lecture. And what under that paradigm, people would do science as normal. We had these preconceptions. We would go out, look out at the world and interpret them based on the assumptions you already have. But eventually people will notice more things that don't fit within those assumptions. This is what we call model drift. We're starting to notice a little bit that isn't quite fitting, so we're deviating a little bit from those assumptions. Eventually we will have find so many examples that don't fit within the pre-established theories that we have a model crisis. People are having a crisis about what they think about the natural world because they're noticing things that don't fit within the previous models. Eventually, someone will come up with a new model and this will be our model revolution. People are now actively fighting about this idea versus that idea. People get really incensed. And eventually we will have a paradigm change. We will accept a new model as the status quo or what we think is happening. And then this will happen again and again. Uh, Thomas Kuhn is a physicist. So in his book, he um, talked about our revolutions on our understanding of the atom. And he was a little full of himself. He didn't think that other fields that weren't as hard science as physics could have paradigm changes. But we actually see this in all fields. And you might notice it in the social activism that's going on right now. But since we're talking about evolution, let's talk about Darwin and Mandel. Darwin had a couple insights. Let's recap them. He gave us the mechanism of natural selection. He told us that variation is important. And he gave us this idea of population thinking. From Mendel, we got the idea of a heredity. We have particulate inheritance and also dominance. All of these, really great insights. And both of them were actually pretty nice people as far as I could tell. If Darwin said something bad about you, you know you fucked up. But after these men passed away, they had a few camps that didn't necessarily get along with each other. Darwin's followers called themselves the naturalists and Mendel's followers called themselves the geneticists. Naturalists saw the world and they would appreciate variation, but they actually still believed in blending inheritance at the time. Geneticists, they only recognized two variants. They would have a wild type and a mutant. A mutant generally something that was manipulated in a laboratory setting. They, they also believed in particulate inheritance. And not all of these were correct. So we know that naturalists got some of it right and geneticists got some of it right, but some of these were wrong. So there was a couple decades of infighting between these two camps and they actually thought that these theories didn't get along with each other. And it wasn't until the 1940s when we had the modern synthesis. The modern synthesis, there's a couple really important figures. We have Ernst Mayer, Theodosius Dobzhansky, R.A. Fisher, J.B.S. Haldane, and Sewell Wright. Um, one of the important things here is we actually had some uh, trained mathematicians and statisticians who were able to merge these ideas from Mendel and Darwin into one. Let's use a diagram to help us better understand. So this has a lot of information in it. Let's start in the innermost circle from Darwinism, we got ideas of variation, inheritance, and natural selection. In the modern synthesis, now we are marrying Mendel's ideas with Darwin's ideas. We get ideas of Mendelian inheritance or particulate inheritance specifically, mutation from genes, um, speciation and trends, and something called population genetics, which we will cover in next lecture. We also have this extra circle here, the integrated synthesis. And you see some interesting words here such as evo-devo theory, plasticity and accommodation, epigenetic inheritance, multi-level selection, genomic evolution, niche construction, replicator theory, and evolvability. 
The integrated synthesis is a little bit of out of the scope of this class. However, it is fascinating. Um, the integrated synthesis is really about marrying ideas of ontogeny or development and with evolution. If you'd like to learn more, I highly recommend this book by Sean Carroll, Endless Forms Most Beautiful. Check for a link in the box below. So, can you explain? What is the modern synthesis and why is it important? 